Epilogue Beyond the Fourth Wall Trick did not remember exactly how he got out of the Great Khan's sanctum. He remembered falling to his knees and weeping uncontrollably. He could also remember Ponico picking up a fallen blaster rifle and shooting the broken gate until it was enveloped in flames. But then everything was a blur for several minutes. Clambering through the rockfall, trying to find Appia and Radier, Ponico giving them up for dead and dragging Trig into the partially collapsed tunnel. Back outside, into the frozen wastes, up the hill, back through the conduit to Kaldorix. Trig slept in the infirmary for two days. When he woke up, some of Hanakon's crew provided him with a meal and a digital entertainment center. They told Trigg that several of his bones were cracked due to fighting on a full gravity world. He would need to rest and take medicine for several weeks. Trigg passed the time by watching the news. The new Sutherian government had announced a plan to evacuate the homeworld. The SLA asteroid strike had kicked off an ecological catastrophe that would, after several years, render the moon temporarily uninhabitable. The remnants of the Vestum regime had been put to flight. So far Vestum and his remaining supporters were last seen crossing the Nagyari border. Meanwhile, the Nagyari and MSI had lost interest in fighting each other. Aside from minor skirmishes along the border, a cautious peace had settled over the luminous frontier. There were unconfirmed reports of a religious revival taking place in the Metro, a region of Nagyari space not far from the necropolis. Finally, there was significant activity on the Olenbar homeworld. MSI had announced the development of a new vehicle that would allow explorers to venture through astral rifts. Supposedly, during a test flight, an Olenbar pilot had discovered a primitive civilization residing in the alternate reality found on the far side of a rift. Millions of investors were excited about the chance for MSI to return to its true purpose, uplifting the less fortunate of the universe. No one spoke to Trigg about what happened on the necropolis, but it seemed as though Ponico had briefed Hanakon at least. In turn, Hanakon had signaled the Resonance Cascade to turn around and come back. The R4 mercenary crew reunited with Trigg and tried to console him. But how could they? Not even Ponico seemed to be aware of the fact that Trigg was now hosting the Song of the Solitaire inside of his own body. And Trigg intended to keep this a secret for now. In those dark moments between sleeping and waking over the past few days, Trick had examined his connection to the creature and learned to understand it. The Song of the Solitaire was a type of life form that relied on mutual symbiosis to survive. The creature would provide Trig with additional focus and willpower and would also shield him from telepathic attack. In return, the creature would sustain itself by feeding on the toxic waste in Trick's brain. Normally, a typical Sutherian brain would build up waste during the day and purge it during deep sleep. Thanks to the Song of the Solitaire, Trig was able to fully refresh himself after only a few short hours of rest. The only negative trade-off, in Trig's opinion, was that he was now having dreams far less often. After figuring out how the Song of the Solitaire worked, Trig deduced something else. This is how Malum created the Nocturnal Plague, Trigg thought to himself. He imprisoned this poor thing and stole its energy to make psionic parasites that eat dreams. He knew the Song of the Solitaire's containment chamber was somewhere on the Kaldorix, but he did not go looking for it. When Resonance Cascade returned, it was time for a painful conversation. Someone must have told Trigg's mother the full story because Kara said very little, holding Trigg's hand and reassuring him that he did his best. Kit, I'm really sorry things worked out this way, Captain Cantor said. And are we sure 
Appia and the creepy stalker guy are dead? I'm certain, Trigg said. They were buried for a few minutes before Ponico started searching. Selborne hugged Trigg. I'm sorry, she said. And she really went through the gate after she picked you as her Athera? Trigg nodded. Selborne and Bronley looked uncomfortably at one another. We're both really sorry for you, Bronley said. In our culture, what Tenna did is cause for Sagri. If... if you want to kill her, then you've got every right to do that. Give us a call if you ever find her again, Selborne finished. We'll hold her down for you. Identical dark expressions appeared on Selborne and Kara's faces. But Trigg did not want to find Tenna. He was hurt. Not physically, but mentally. This adventure, which had seemed incredible and exciting, had ended so badly at the final moment. Tenna's betrayal stung him in ways that Malam Ralpakin's revival could not. The end result was that, for the first time, Trigg was sick of adventure. He just wanted to go home, to get away from all of this and explore his newfound symbiosis with the Song of the Solitaire. Three weeks after his confrontation with Malam, the Resonance Cascade arrived at Crystal Zupakin. Their destination was Valerius 22, a mining habitat. Located at the edge of a crystalline asteroid field, this urbanized space station was home to an MSI resource gathering operation, plus about 5,000 Sutherians who fled from SLA violence. Captain Cantor refused to leave Trigg alone on the station until he personally met Pentua Shepmenter. The R4 mercenaries fanned out from the docking bay, searching high and low until Glossom found her. She's got a job in the hydroponics bay, Glossom told the group. Kid wasn't kidding around when he said she was a lifelong farmer. Pentua was attempting to pay off the cost of living on Valerius 22 by working for MSI. They had put her to work at a massive hydroponics system, scanning and monitoring the health of several different crops. When Pentua saw Trigg approaching, flanked by a team of mercenaries, she dropped her scanner and hobbled towards them at her best speed, walking stick hitting the metal floor loudly as she went. Well, that looks like Trick Shepminter and Kara Charnham, Pentua said, folding her arms and allowing a wide smile to cross her features. But it can't be. They're off having adventures right now. The adventure's over, Pentua, Kara said, greeting her old friend with a hug. Trick and I are going back to Edelton. We thought we should ask if you wanted a ride, Trick chimed in, pointing at the mercenaries behind him. These guys are going to Sutheria, and they said they'll drop us at Edelton on the way. While Pentua called over an MSI manager and haggled over her final paycheck, Panico turned to Trig. I am going to get a ship of my own. Try to find Malum and Tenna. Are you sure you don't want to come along? I'm sure, Trig replied. The new government is moving to Edelton. I'm going to ask around. Find out if that SLA guy, Commander Charnum, really is related to Mom. But if you want to keep in touch, I won't mind. They shook hands. Don't get too comfortable, Trig, Ponico said. I imagine you and your companion will be called back into action before too long. Ponico winked at Trig, who wondered just how he had figured out the truth. Trigg let out a deep sigh and said, Take your time out there. I'm not really in a hurry to deal with those two. But when the time comes, I'll be ready.
Holy shit, we did it! Three books combined into one. The combined story is really tightly compressed. Plot elements are shuffled around in a total mess, and you can totally see the transitions from one book to the next, but yeah, Song of the Solitaire really ate its two sequels. So much for the planned trilogy. Stop putting yourself down like that. This was fun. Aside from the part where Malum faked being dead and damn near pulled a Callie on us. Callie just got pissed off at me. Malum really would have killed me. But we totally smacked his punk ass down. By the way, you do know what time it is here, right? I'm trying to sleep. You scared the crap out of me. You deserve to lose a little sleep. Also, don't talk like you're my age. Besides, I'm off work this weekend, and my sister went off somewhere with her boyfriend. I thought I'd take your next rough draft to kill the boredom. And you did say there was going to be a part two. When are we starting? We are six years apart, Cho. Dread it, run from it, your thirties will arrive all the same. And no, I'm not going to start writing part two right away. I'm going to do another out-of-fandom story. Remember when I wrote that Stardew Valley fanfic in between Year of Hell and Song of the Solitaire? Well, I found it was a lot of fun and a great way to mentally reset myself before writing Song of the Solitaire 2 Electric Boogaloo. I've got an idea for a short Crusader Kings fanfic, then I'll go back and do Song of the Solitaire 2. History dude, check one, CBR should have finished making theories by then. Fuck you! I loved Winter Star. Send me what you've got before you accidentally turn a dead 14-year-old into a father of three again. Speaking of theories, what about Tenna and Malum? They've got the perforator. Could they Callie themselves with it? Callie would be so pissed off if she knew we turned her into a verb. But no, I've already thought about that. All knowledge of the Vaultum and the Great Lie is buried deep. Malum is convinced the only way to get to me is by traveling through Astral Rifts. He'll keep using the Perforator as a navigational aid to get through Astral Rifts and never know he's going in the wrong direction. Can I go to sleep now? Send me that rough draft first. What's the new story called anyway? Last Days of the Emerald Isle This is McCavity 116. We hope you've enjoyed this unabridged production of Song of the Solitaire, narrated by the author. This work is copyrighted 2023 by McCavity 116. Stellaris was developed and published by Paradox Interactive. All characters in this story were created by McCavity 116. Copyright 2023.